Hi, YouTube world. This is Miss Patty from Four Year CNA, and today is our live CNA question and answer session, Thursdays at three. So we're going to give everybody a few seconds to get in and get settled. And as always, when you come in, if you've got a question, please, please feel free to put it in the chat. I'm just going to open my chat up here so I can see. I hope everybody is having a fantastic Thursday. I am. So before we get started, while I'm waiting for everybody to show up, um, we usually have a like an opening um, little segment where I answer a question I didn't get to from last week. And last week's question actually was from uh, Joanna P. And she had asked um, during the opening, when is it that you're supposed to wash your hands? So I want to spend just a couple of minutes talking about this because this actually is an important infection control uh, principle. Um, I, we got some people here. I hope, can you guys hear me? If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up or type something in the chat. I want to make sure that my microphone is working today. We had a problem last week. So if you can hear me, give me a quick thumbs up. Anybody hear me? Okay, it looks like I got two thumbs up. Awesome. Good afternoon, dear Moonstar. Hi, Latoya. Hi. Welcome. I'm so happy you guys made it. Stacy, you hear me? Yay. Okay, so when do you wash your hands during the opening? And this is actually kind of important because it has to do with infection control. So our opening is knock, knock, knock. Hi, Miss Jones. My name is Patty. I'm your CNA today and I'm here to whatever, whatever the skill is that you're going to do. Is that okay? And then you close the curtain and then wash your hands. So a question comes up quite often is why can't I wash my hands when I first walk into the room before I do my opening? And although that seems kind of logical, right? When you walk in, you wash your hands, that way you're approaching the bed with clean hands. It seems very logical, but it's actually not, believe it or not. And that's because you have to provide privacy. That's part of a patient's right. Um, you know, patients have a bill of rights and uh, patients in the hospital have a bill of rights and residents in a long-term care setting have a bill of rights. So, but one of the rights that's... Um, uh, universal is the right to privacy. So we know we have to pull that privacy curtain before we perform our skills. That curtain is not considered clean. Think of all the people that have touched that curtain. Let's start with the patient, right? Patients can certainly touch the curtain. It's within their reach, but patients in bed also sneeze and they cough, and that produces projectile uh, fluids. If the patient has um, vomited, that can produce um, some splatter. So all of those body fluids can end up on that curtain, along with whatever happens to be on their hands if they open and close that curtain. But healthcare workers are by far the um, biggest culprit here because healthcare workers don't always pay attention to what they're touching, especially if they have gloves on, because they're no longer concerned about getting their own hands contaminated. So they stop paying attention um, to what they're touching. So it's very, very easy to cross contaminate in a patient's environment. You empty the drainage bag, you go dump the urine, and then you open the curtain before you take your gloves off. People will do this without even thinking about it, even though whatever's on your hands is now contaminating that curtain. So staff members really are the biggest culprit, but you also have um, visitors, you've got volunteers, you have dietary, you've got all kinds of people that come in and out of that room. And most of them are going to touch that curtain at some point. It's not considered clean. So when we think about infection control, anytime we're going to physically touch the patient, we should make absolutely positive that we have clean hands to do so. So the proper protocol here is to uh, introduce yourself to the patient, let them know that what you're about to do, make sure that you get their permission, identify the patient, 
provide privacy, and then you should wash your hands. That way, when you go get your supplies, when you start the skill, when you touch the patient in any way, you have clean hands to do so. And this is actually graded on your uh, skills exam under indirect care. And there's a specific line in there on indirect care that says, did the candidate um, refrain from touching the patient until their hands are clean. So this is actually a graded checkpoint. So that was a really good question that uh, Joanna had last week, and I wanted to make sure that I covered it. Now, at the end of the skill, um, it's okay, you know, once you do the skill and you've removed your gloves, it's okay to open the curtain to give them their call light. Those items are all contaminated. We know that. The patient is in that environment and everything in their environment is going to be contaminated by them. But here's the important part. It's only contaminated with their own cooties. So it's okay to hand them the call light and then open the curtain or open the curtain and then um, uh, arrange their sheet, you know, straighten their sheet up or whatever needs to be done. That's okay because those um, that environment is all um, the patient's. But once you're done with the patient, you're going to go to that sink and wash your hands so that all of that patient's cooties have, have now been rinsed off of your hands and washed off of your hands are now down the drain so that we can leave that room with clean hands because we don't know what's going to happen in the hallway that requires our assistance. So the proper protocol here is to make sure that your hands are clean before you touch the patient or their supplies and to make sure that you wash your hands again at the end of the skill after you're all done with the patient. Now, something that comes up quite often is that um, students will, they'll get in a hurry at the end of the skill. They'll do their closing, they'll open the curtain, they'll get over to the sink, they'll wash their hands, and then they realize, oh no, I forgot to give the patient their call light. If you go back to that bedside to give the patient their call light after you've washed your hands, that effectively renders that entire hand washing void. So, because you're back with the patient cooties. So anytime you have to go back to the bed after you've washed your hands for anything, you've got to rewash again at the end of the skill. Otherwise, it will be an infection control um, doc. It, it, it'll, it'll count against you for infection control. So I hope you guys help. I hope that helped you guys. Okay, so I found some value in that. So let me take a look here and see who's here. Uh, Zigmi. Hi, Zigmi. Uh, Elaine is here. Nancy, uh, P I think it's PLL. Hello. Hello, Nancy. Cynthia, hi. Roxanne says, hi, Miss Patty. I finally caught you live. Yay. Oh, Roxanne. Oh, thank you so much. That was so wonderful. I'm so glad that you were able to join us today. Roxanne sent me some beautiful pink roses. And uh, that was such a huge surprise. Thank you so much, Roxanne. I appreciate it. Um, Karen says, hi. Greetings from Texas. Hi, Karen. Thanks for joining us. W. Patterson is giving me a thumbs up. Yay. Elaine says, your videos helped me pass my CNA exam in 2018. Oh, congratulations, Elaine. You've been in the, the um, field for quite some time. I hope it's working out well for you. Um, we desperately need CNAs, so recruit other people. We need to bring some more people in. Um, and thanks for stopping by. That's awesome. FT says, are you holding classes over the internet? So this is a, a very um, interesting um, conversation. Okay, and I'm going to take just a minute real quick to talk about this. Right now, I'm still doing classroom training. So I still have students in my classroom are socially distancing. They have to wear masks, all of that kind of stuff. But last year during the shutdown, I actually did two complete full live YouTube classes over the Internet. Um, if because we're in Florida and the. Um, the infection rate is just skyrocketing here. If at any time I feel that it is not safe for me to continue doing classes in a classroom session, in a classroom um, 
uh, location, then I may look at putting another live class together. Um, so kind of, I don't know yet. The answer to that is I don't know yet. It really depends on whether I can keep teaching in my classroom or whether I need to make that adjustment to um, online. It depends on what happens in my community. But I'll always uh, keep you guys updated on my live sessions. So make sure you, um, you know, come in here and, and I can keep you updated on what's going on or catch the, the replays after the live. And I would always um, advertise it on my website as well. So um, keep an eye on the website. So let's see here. Uh, Yona Tan says, hi. Hi. I hope I said that right. Um, F. Roberts, Robertson says, hi, Miss Patty. I'm taking my exam next week. Oh, boy, how exciting. Um, I know testing is so stressful. Uh, you're probably a ball of nerves right now. Remember to focus on the patient. It's all about the patient. If your focus is more on the patient than on you, you'll do much better. So remember to focus on that patient. Um, so Salama Witt says, hi, hi. Um, F. Robertson says, looking at the videos. Yeah, that, that's going to be a big help for you. Elaine Campbell says, thank you. Crystal, hi, Crystal. Hi, Miss. I'm currently uh, ongoing the CNA course presently. I'm from Trinidad and uh, Tobago. Wow, how exciting. Trinidad is, is one place I've never been. Um, we do, I, I like to cruise. My husband and I really like to cruise. Of course, COVID um, has impacted that, but we really like to cruise and we've been to many, many islands. Um, Trinidad is one I haven't made it to, but um, I have seen pictures and it's gorgeous. So I'm so glad to be part of your journey, Crystal. Thank you for joining us. Um, let's see here. Joining the live from JM, is that Jamaica? I'm not sure. LaToya, if you can give me uh, a little bit more, let me know where you're from. I'm not sure, JM, my eyes are getting bad, guys. I can't read this little writing. Um, I think it's possibly Jamaica. So LaToya, if you're from Jamaica, welcome, welcome. We're getting a lot more international exposure too, which is awesome. Very good. This is back to school time. Yes, Jamaica, LaToya. Welcome. Welcome. I have been to Jamaica. It's a lovely country. Um, this is back to school time, guys. And this is my super busy, crazy, no sleep time because school's all over. Um, our ordering our books and our resources, and I'm trying to get all the teachers set up with the online programs. So um, I'm super excited to be able to take a break from being busy and come hang out with you guys for a little while. This is this is my fun time. So I'm super excited you guys give me the opportunity. Thanks for joining. Um, so does anybody have any questions for me today? Do you guys have any questions that you want to type in the chat? I'd love to answer them for you. If not, I've got a question that came up in class yesterday. Oh, Jamaica. Okay. Der Moon Stars from Jamaica. Elaine. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for clarifying, guys. <laughs> like I said, my eyes are getting old. Um, so a question came up in class yesterday because, like I said, I still teach classroom uh, CNA. And I had a question that um, really seems to be kind of confusing people out there. So I want to spend, if nobody has any pressing questions right now, I want to spend just a minute talking about it. So there's a confusion on CNA skills. And I think that I, I, I found a, an easy way to break this down for you to make it a little bit easier to understand. So CNA skills actually come in two flavors. There's personal care and there's nursing. Now, we call them all CNA skills, but they really are two different categories. So nursing skills are things that you need higher level training for. And we're going to get to that in just a second. I want to focus on the personal skills first. So personal care are things you do for yourself every day. We call these ADLs or activities of daily living. So things you do for yourself every day, things like bathing, dressing, grooming, toileting, eating, socialization, mobility, getting where you need to go, 
you don't really need any class, right? Any training to know how to brush teeth. You've been doing that for yourself forever since you were probably about three or four years old. So you know how to brush teeth. You also know how to get dressed. You know how to bathe yourself. You know how to make your own bed. I mean, you know how to do all these things because you do them every day. Where the, the confusion comes in is now you're doing this on another person, right? So CNAs, that's the majority of what CNAs do is personal care skills on somebody who can't do them for themselves. Trust me, if your patient can take care of their own toileting needs, they do not want you involved. <laughs> Nobody is, is, you know, saying, hey, help me, help me when they don't need help. Um, so if the thing to understand about personal care is that if the patient can do it themselves, they're going to. We're only going to help with personal care that the patient can't do for whatever reason. Maybe it's a physical limitation. Maybe it's a mental limitation. Maybe it's an energy problem. But for whatever reason, they can't do that. We need to help them. But that personal care um, category, you need to understand, is not skilled. That it, it's not, it's just personal care. So in an assisted living facility, okay, an ALF, we're not doing nursing there. Assisted living is personal care, okay? So you don't really need training for personal care because you know how to shower, you know how to dress. So when in an assisted living facility, they can hire people off the street and work them as resident aides. No training, no classes, no certification, because what they're doing is bathing, dressing, eating, toileting, grooming, you know, all of those ADLs. Think of it like friendly neighbor, okay? If this is something you could go over and help your neighbor with, if they all of a sudden had a catastrophic accident and they needed some help, these are things you can help them with, right? There doesn't take anything, um, you know, you, you don't have to go to, to, you know, classes to learn how to brush teeth. You know how to brush teeth. You could help a, a neighbor with something like that. So assisted living can hire people, to perform ADLs without any training, as long as the patient is, you know, relatively stable, there's no problem with that. Now, CNAs do personal care, okay? So we do bathing and dressing and grooming and toileting and all of those other things. That's what we do. But our clients, because CNAs are certified and generally work in higher level establishments with patients that have more extreme health conditions. So assisted living, there's, they're just, they're, they're a little bit older, their mobility, they're a little tired. They just don't want to do everything on their own anymore. So assisted living, they're not sick. They're just older. Okay. Big difference. So assisted living, we're just doing ADLs on normal people maybe have a few health conditions, but they're not receiving nursing services. Now, patients that are receiving nursing services, that means they've got something going on that's pretty serious, serious enough to need a nurse. So that means that the ADLs we're helping them with may need some accommodations. You guys getting that? Okay, so ADLs, in a non-clinical setting, just regular bathing, dressing, grooming, et cetera, ADLs in a clinical setting may require accommodations. That's why we need that certified. That's why you have to go to school to learn how to bathe, dress, groom, et cetera, because it's not because of the bathing, dressing, and grooming. 
it's because we have to accommodate the patient's needs. We have to change something for that particular patient. And that is what CNA training is all about. It's about helping you understand where to find the instructions, which is the care plan, right? Anybody that's listened to me for more than five minutes, you know, it's the care plan, the whole care plan and nothing but the care plan. So we have to know where to find our instructions. We have to know how to safely accommodate for different things. But we also have to learn a little bit about what's normal and abnormal, what we need to report to the nurse. So it, even though bathing, dressing, grooming, et cetera, is the same, whether you're in an assisted living facility or a clinical setting, it's still mouth care. But assisted living doesn't require accommodation clinical setting might. And that's why we need you certified because we need to make sure that you understand all of those little nuances. So I hope that kind of sheds some light on the difference between um, resident aides in an assisted living facility that may be doing very similar work and CNAs in a clinical facility. And it all has to do with the needs of the patient. Okay, I hope that helped. So let's see here. Uh, Crystal says, um, oh, let me see here. Um, Miss Patty, do you have a book to learn from? Yes, Crystal, we do. And my book is right here, the CNA Skills Study Guide. I'll put my, um, in the chat, hold on. Oops. You go there. It's courses.foyourcna.com slash shop. You can order the book directly online. Um, let's see here. Uh, Der Moonstar says, when we have CNA certification, can we teach or we need another license to teach CNA classes? That's a very good question. So it really depends on what state you're in. In most states, um, in fact, every state but Florida, okay, every state but Florida, you have to be a nurse with a minimum of two years of long-term care experience um, or nursing supervisory experience to be eligible to teach an approved program. Now, Florida is a little different because in Florida, there are no classes required for CNA testing. So in Florida, you can work at Target today, watch a couple videos and test for CNA tomorrow. And if you pass, you're a CNA. You don't have to go to class anywhere. So in Florida, there's an awful lot of test preps that have kind of popped up around that aren't being taught by nurses. And a lot of them aren't even being taught by CNAs. And a lot of them aren't being taught by anybody who really knows what they're talking about. They just look at it as maybe a quick way of making a buck. Um, so be careful in Florida, make sure that the school that you're going to, and they'll call themselves schools, even though they're not, um, training centers, academies, those types of things. Make sure that the person that you're learning from um, truly has some experience in the field and uh, can answer questions appropriately. Um, in other words, do your homework, make sure that they're credible because not all places in Florida are staffed by people who really know enough to teach. Um, and that's kind of sad. That really is. I feel like maybe there could be some better controls in place. Um, there's a lot of fraud out there, a lot of fraud. In fact, there was one place that I just saw that was advertising, and this just makes me crazy, advertising that you can get your home health aid certificate upon enrollment in their program. Now, guys, that's that should be a warning bell to everybody. There is no legitimate organization anywhere, anywhere that would give you a certificate when you enroll, right? So, you know, if that were your grandma that somebody's taking care of, you'd want to make sure that they had the appropriate training to take care of your grandma safely. So there's a lot of scams out there. Just do your, your diligence. Um, check things out before you give people your money. OK, 
Okay. Um, but in most, in every other state, you are required to be a nurse. So hope that helped. Um, let's see here. Monique. Hi, Monique. Says Shalom. Oh, hi, Shalom. That's actually my daughter's middle name. Uh, good afternoon. I'm new to your channel. Would like to know the time and the schedule you'll be on, please. Sure. Monique, I am on every Thursday at 3 p.m. So Thursdays at 3, you'll find me here. Um, let's see here. Tanya says, hello, I've looked at your videos and they're wonderful. I'm a registered nurse who's wanting to start a CNA program in Indiana. Would like to talk to you about your program. Well, thank you, Tanya. I appreciate that. The best thing to do is to go to my website, foryourcna.com. It's the number four, Y-O-U-R-C-N-A.com. There's a contact us under on the top menu. It says more click contact me, send me a, a quick, fill out my contact form, send me a quick email and I'll be happy to talk to you. We'll uh, schedule a Zoom meeting. Um, let's see here. Mariana says, hello. Hi, Sandra says, hello. Karen, hi, Karen. Um, Karen says, it's true. Is it true that we don't need to know everything in CNA class because the facility, they're gonna teach us how to do things. Okay, so Karen, Every setting is going to be a little bit different. Um, so if you're working in a mother baby unit, you're going to have a completely different skill set than if you were working on a floor in a hospital that is um, doing hip and knee surgeries. Okay, different skill sets. Um, if you're working in long term care, that's going to be a different skill set than if you were working with cancer patients. If you're working in a hospice, that's a little different skill set. What CNA training does is it provides a foundation, so basic skills that you're going to build on. And it depends on what setting you're in as to which of those skills you'll be using a lot and which you won't. So it's important to, um, it's important to pay attention in CNA class and learn everything very well because you're not real sure which ones you're going to be, uh, you know, which skills you're going to be utilizing later on in your career. You may, you may have gotten hired to work on a telemetry floor and about six months in, uh, you get an opportunity to work in a nursing home for $4 more an hour. So you take it. Well, if you didn't pay attention in CNA class, there's going to be skills that you didn't learn on the telemetry floor that you're going to need in the, the long-term care setting. So it's important that you learn everything. It's all for a reason. Um, but when you get into wherever you're going to be working, you will refine your skills and they will teach you the skills that you're going to need in that setting. But the CNA program is there to provide that foundation for them to build on. Crystal says, thanks. Uh, Cindy says, hi, how are you? Hi, Cindy. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, Blue Jet, I, I know. I rolled my eyes super hard. A Helm Health certificate upon enrolling. I know. I could I could talk for a half hour on that, but I won't. I'm going to be nice today. Um, let's see here. Immaculate says, hello. Hello. Um, FT says, question about Colorado CNA. Okay, F FT, go ahead and type your question in. Blue Jedi says here in Washington, before we can even enroll in that kind of course, it's a fingerprint check and a background check and a minimum. I, I agree, Blue Jedi. I think that that needs to be in place. There's a lot of unethical CNAs out there. Um, I actually have a folder. I collect um, articles on unethical healthcare workers um, when I happen to come across them. And one of these days, I'm going to put a section on my website um, just for those, because it is amazing how many unethical healthcare providers we have out there. And we we're really trying hard to prevent that from happening. Um, let's see here. Monique says, thank you. Jabassi. I hope I said that right. Says maybe this is a dumb question. No such thing as a dumb question. Not on my channel. My class was wondering what, is that your son in the videos? Yes, yes, that is my son. That's my oldest mini me. 
Um, I love him to pieces and he's great at being a patient because he doesn't draw a lot of attention to himself. So it makes the, the skill, uh, it makes the focus on the skill rather than the patient. So he's awesome at what he does. We just love him to pieces. We're going to keep him. Um, Nancy says, thank you. Uh, Jabasi, let's see here. Cindy says, I'm standing online looking at your videos. Amazing videos. I'm a certified HHA living now in Florida. Well, congratulations. How long does it take to get a date for the state exam? We fill out or we'll fill out the application next week. Okay, Cindy, if you go onto my website for your CNA.com under testing. So along my top, I've got, you know, different um, menus. Go to testing. I actually have test registration instructions on there that's going to walk you through all of it. It tells you the timeline as well. Right now, depending on the area that you're in and how long it takes, to um, evaluate your background. That's kind of the unknown here, but I'm going to assume you have no criminal history. Um, so it it's taking now about three to four weeks from the time that you apply until you get your testing date. That's about the time frame that it's running here in Florida. Now that's that's make you know that's barring any problems, making sure your application is complete and they don't need more information, it, you know, that your um, background is evaluated quickly by the Board of Nursing, um, you know, that you have no criminal history and they're able to approve you quickly. So there's a couple of things there that I can't anticipate, but barring any of those, it's now taking about three to four weeks from application until test date issue. So they're going to send you the test date. Now your test date will be about a week and a half after that. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, let's see here. Crystal says, we're blessed to have you on. Oh, thank you. Aw, Crystal, you're so sweet. Uh, Crystal says she misses loving and uh, uh, love. She loved watching and learning um, from us. So thank you so much. John says, uh, tune in for Washington State. Well, thank you, John. Nice, of, nice to see you. Nice of you to join us. Colleen says, hi, I'm in Florida, Pompano Beach, and I'm so glad for your class. I watch your videos night and day, and I enjoyed every minute of them. Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you, Colleen. I really appreciate it. Um, Pompano Beach is beautiful. I've been down there before. Um, let's see. Blue Jedi says, what's the hardest skill for someone to learn or gives the students most trouble learning? Okay. Um, so that's a very good question. It's very subjective, very subjective. And it really depends on your instructor too, how easy they make it to learn. So that's going to play into this as well. But for my students, the one that they seem to have the most trouble with, honestly, is partial bed bath. Not because it's a hard skill, it's washing. I mean, we wash every day in the shower, right? That's not a hard thing. It's just because there's so many steps <laughs> that they tend to get lost in the middle of it. And it's not uncommon at all to forget to rinse um, or forget to dry or totally forget to do the back, you know? So there's so many steps that that seems to, to give them a little bit of a hard time. Um, but it really depends. Some people find uh, mouth care very difficult to learn or denture care because they uh, have a kind of a mental block. They, you know, it's just kind of icky to them. They just not their cup of tea. So um, some people have trouble with mouth care. Some people have trouble with range of motion, which is surprising to, to me because I feel that's one of the easiest skills, but the terms tend to throw them that abduction, adduction and flexion extension. And if you guys are interested, I can give you a lesson on that one of these um, one of these sessions as well. So it really depends on you as to which one is going to be hard for you. Uh, Badri says watching now from Massachusetts. Well, thank you, Badri. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Let, um, Jabasi says the second time you, uh, Jab the second time I said Jabasi, that's how I say it. Oh, I hope I said it right that time. Jabas Jabasi. Uh, Cindy says, thank you. I'm in Jacksonville. Jabasi. Okay. J thank you for spelling that out for me. Jabasi. Um, FT says, I need help. Where do I begin to be a CNA? Oh, that's a big question. 
Um, and it's not really one I can answer in the few minutes that we have left, but it really depends on what state you're in. So FT, if you can tell me what state you're in really quickly before we go, um, I will make that my lesson for the next week. OK, so next week I will tell you step by step what what the requirements are and how to go about um, getting your CNA in your state. Just let me know what state you're in and I'll try to help you out with that next week. Colleen says, when you said that I'll review the steps of my skills, what do you do? OK, that's a great question, Colleen, and I can answer that really quickly. So. I'm going to show you my skills book because this just makes it a little bit easier. So in my skills book, and I know everything is backwards to you guys. I, I know, but um, this is, I, I don't have a way of turning the camera right now. So in the skills book, so this is a skills page on changing position to supported sideline. This right here, this gray box is kind of the short version of the skill. Now I've got, you know, step-by-step -step instructions that go over to this page. I mean, it, it, it leads you through the skill. But this is kind of a short version, okay? So when I'm all done with the skill and I'm getting ready to tell the evaluator that I'm done, I want to mentally, I've memorized this, so I want to mentally think through my steps. So I'm going to ask myself, did I do the opening? Did I wash my hands? Did I use a privacy blanket? Did I make sure that the patient wasn't too close to the bed? Did I scoot the patient toward me and roll them away so they stayed in the middle of the bed after the turn? Did I prop them there with pillows behind the back, between the knees, under the top arm? And did I adjust the pillow under his head? Did I make sure the call light is in his hand? And did I do my closing? Does everything look nice and neat? Like, did I take the privacy blanket away? Did I pull the sheet up? Does everything look clean? Did I do my closing? So I went through all of that in my mind, step by step. I reviewed mentally all of those steps. And I'm looking at the patient while I'm doing that. And I'm trying to see, do they look comfortable? Do they look too close to the edge of the bed? Um, you know, I'm looking at the patient. That's what I mean by review the steps of my skill. Now, these um, gray boxes, let me get to a different one to show you. So these gray boxes are on every single skill in my book, these gray boxes. I also have um, flashcards that we sell on our website that has those gray boxes for every single skill, also has the supplies and it has the principles. So those flashcards are kind of the, the short version of my book. Um, and that might be helpful as well. If you have the book, make your own flashcards, just use index cards, um, but that you may find that, that helpful. But that's what I'm thinking about when I'm reviewing the steps of my skill. I hope that helps. Um, let's see here. Cindy says, with COVID exploding right now in Florida, are you expecting delays in the exam? Right now, no. They're doing everything possible not to delay because we lost a lot of CNAs during COVID. A lot of people left the, the um, industry altogether. A lot got sick. So we, we were already behind the eight ball. And it's it, we now have a critical shortage. I mean, a critical shortage. So we can't really afford any delays. So right now, they they really are pushing through. And um, you know, thank God for those evaluators that are willing to work to make this happen. Um, tell tells me and says hi everyone. Hi, Crystal says I'm interested in anything you're willing to share to help me along with my course. No problem. I'll uh, I'll talk about. Um, one of these uh, lessons, when I've got a little time, I'll talk about all of the different motions for range of motion. And uh, Immaculate says, I'm needing reviews, please. I'm in Fort Myers. Immaculate, your best way of reviewing for the test is to go onto my website, watch all of my animated videos and all of my skills videos. And that's the best review. I also have an online course that will lead you through everything step by step. So all of the videos are free on my website, but my course takes that and ramps it up like 100%. So all of my classroom lectures are in the course, interactive activities, 
uh, questions, um, worksheets, all kinds of stuff in that online course. So if you need the free option, my videos on my website for your CNA.com, watch the skills videos and the animated videos. If you want to truly be prepared, enroll in the online course. Okay. Uh, FT says Vermont. All right, Vermont. I will check this out. So Vermont CNA, how to get started. All right. And this is from FT. All right. FT, you have the question for next week. So make sure you turn in. Okay. Uh, Crystal says, miss it. Two separate books. There's one behind. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Um, the, the book, I only have one book and that's this one, CNA skills study guide. What you see behind me, the yellow, those are care plan sets. Those are used mostly by um, classrooms, but you know, individuals can buy them too, but you, you know, those are on page 17 of your, of the skills book. Um, so you really don't need those. Those are more for practice in a classroom session. Although we have a lot of people that buy those individuals that buy them for practice. I mean, that, that's an option too, but, um, page 17, your skills book has the same information. Um, let's see here. Immaculate says, thank you. And uh, Monique says, how much for the course? Monique, my online course is $149. Um, and you have, you know, you, you have my email. You have access to me for questions as well. All right, guys, let's get to uh, who passed this week. Yay. This is a, an awesome part of my uh, weekly session with you. So who are we congratulating this week? We're congratulating Gladys Ramos, who passed the CNA State exam. John N.K. also passed this week. So congratulations to John. Tony D. dropped in and let us know that um, they passed in New Mexico. So there's a state we don't hear much about. So congratulations and welcome to healthcare. Uh, Dumbbell Dork X. <laughs> what a name. Uh, congrat uh, congratulations to you. And they are actually moving on to our end. So great job. Congratulations and best of luck. Uh, Sierra Malone also passed the CNA state exam this week. So we're super, super proud. All of you guys did a fantastic job and we want to welcome you into healthcare. Now we have a couple people waiting on results. So I'm hoping that they tune in maybe after they catch the replay and they let us know how they did. So um, IT Okiora, I have no idea if I said that right, um, is waiting on results. Phil Xena or Zena, I'm not sure how they pronounce it, but it's X-I-N-A. So Phil Zena or Xena is waiting. So we're waiting to hear from them. Angel Moyer tested yesterday. So we're hoping, keeping our fingers crossed, that they did well. And Zeslop is testing today. So we're, we're sending out great thoughts and, and happy vibes and hoping for the best, hoping they were successful. And Bahati Ellison is testing on Saturday. So if you happen to think about it on Saturday, um, you know, give a, give a good vibe out there for Bahati who is testing on Saturday. So I hope that helped you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm super excited to do this every week. And um, remember that we're here live on Thursdays at three, bring your questions. In the next couple of weeks, I'm hoping to maybe have a, a little bit of a different format, a different setup. Um, I'm hoping to be able to do this via Zoom as well. Um, I, I'm going to see, I, I've got some technology issues. I'm not real big on technology. Um, so I'm trying to work that out. Um, but I'm also going to be live streaming it to Facebook in a couple of weeks and to my um, my website. So you'll be able to catch me in a couple of different places. And uh, I just have to kind of figure out how to set all of that up so I can make sure I see all the questions as I do this, because that's a big part of this. You guys are what makes this work. So until next week, guys, have a happy week, happy caregiving and stay safe. See you next Thursday at three.